This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, in the um, drushes of the Chassam Soifa on the Inyanim of Shavavim, so Chassam Soifa talks very much about Kedushas Hadibur, which is what we're dealing with, which is what we're working on. Kedushas Hadibur, the power of the tongue, the koyach of words, what it can do to somebody. We spoke a little bit last week about the effect of our words on somebody else's life can affect him for years and years and perhaps even a lifetime. So in the Chassam Soifa, he talks a lot about these sorts of things. And he mentions just one small thing which I'd like to start with today, Be'ez HaShem, is he talks about the tefillah that we offer up every single day, three times a day. We should. <speaking in Hebrew> we daven to the Rebbeinu Shalom for Siyatu Dishmai, we daven to HaShem, please guard our mouths, from anything bad from coming out, anything bad could be any sorts of things we discussed last week, whether it be Lashon Hora, whether it be today's Sugar, you know, whether it can be embarrassing somebody else, whether it could be hurting someone, there could be all sorts of things. But Sazdak Sam Soifer, if it means that three times a day, every single day, we daven to the Rebbein Yishlalim at the close of our Shemayna Esra, when we're close to Hashem, and we're talking, so to speak, we're talking to HaKadosh Baruch Hu face to face. And that's what we ask. Watch our mouths, make sure that nothing bad comes out of our mouth. Obviously, says the Chassam Soifa, we're dealing with something very serious. We're dealing with something that we have to start working on. We have to start watching. And more than that, I feel that we just have to realize what it is. You know, everybody knows Lashon Hara, Emes Fesheke, Nois Tevorim, all the things that we're going to discuss. Everyone knows it's bad. There's not one person here that thinks, ah, it's not so bad. Everybody knows it's terrible. The problem is what we don't realize is the koyach of our dibu, the koyach of the way that we speak can actually affect someone for years and years. I want to give you an example. For today's sugya, Be'ez HaShem, as I want to discuss, I know it's Dvorim. The Pesach tells us, A person, says the Torah, should not pain somebody else. Fear HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ani HaShem Eloikeichem. It sounds from over here, the Torah is telling us that a person has to realize not to embarrass, not to insult the koyach of your pair, we said last week, for Ramosha Aaron Stern's Zatzal, that the mouth is a loaded gun with bullets inside it. And just like if a person shoots the gun, you press the trigger, the bullet is gone, you can't retract it. You can't take it back. It's the same thing over here. Your mouth is a loaded gun. Once you've said the words, it's over. You, of course, you could do tshuva, and you could do this, and you could do that, but the words have affected somebody else. They've insulted someone, they've embarrassed him to a way that's unimaginable of pain that he can be in. And it can last a lifetime. And it's a few words that we do that can simply affect somebody in a tremendous, tremendous way. In fact, the Gemara tells us in Bob Metzia, Daphnon Chesam at base, says the Gemara in Bob Metzia, there are two types of Aino, two types of Aino that the Torah talks about, that we know about. Number one is Aino's Dvorim, hurting someone with words. And number two is what we call Aino's Momoin, hurting someone with money, maybe charging him extra. We're not going into the Sugina, the Gemarim Bab Metzia, Nun Chesam base tells us, very interesting. Aino's Dvorim is a lot worse than Aino's Momoin. You know why? Because Aino's Momoin, when you hurt somebody with money, when you charge them more than you should be charging them, you can always give it back to them. You can always fix it up. A Yonoris Tevorim is a lot harder because a person doesn't realize he's done something bad. A person doesn't realize the koyach of his words. You can say a snide remark to your havusa, to your friend, to your roommate, to your wife, to anyone. And you walk away as if, all right, I said something. Little do you realize that the power of your mouth can affect that person's life long after a physical wound has already been healed. It's something I both said we have to take to heart. It's something we have to realize. In fact, let me tell you something else. And of course, I'm not saying for one moment that if you speak so badly about someone, you insult someone, you can never do tshuva and you can't fix it up. Of course, you could do tshuva. But realize to begin with the koyach of the pet, the koyach of the mouth. In fact, the Gemara tells us as follows. The Gemara tells us over, over there in Bom and Ches that the Rebbeinu Shalom Kaviyochel 
If we can say the words, but the Gemara says it. The Gemara, gets, the Gemara says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gets very, very angry with a Jew that hurts another Jew with words. In fact, the Gemara tells over there something very interesting. The Gemara says normally if HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to punish someone, the punishment comes through somebody else. It comes through an intermediary, a shliach. <coughs> says the Gemara, when it comes to Enos Tavorim, when it comes to hurting somebody with words, HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, says the Gemara, tells us Chazal, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will actually take revenge or take punishment for that that we do. It's not, it's not such, a, it's not such a light thing. We have to realize what we're dealing with over here. The Gemara tells us in Bob Metzian and Testament Aleph, that if a person cries, a person cries out to Hashem because someone insulted him, someone said a bad word, someone said something not nice about him, about his history, his past, what he looks like, anything. And he cries to Hashem because he's so upset. Tells us the Gemara as follows. All of the gates can possibly be closed. Chutz, except. Except for the gates of somebody that cries to HaKadosh Baruch because somebody hurt him. We have to realize that what we say to someone can affect him in a tremendous, tremendous way. And I want to give you a couple of examples. Aloha Lamaisa, Abaisa. Aloha Lamaisa. Of what I know Tavorim includes. Right, and also it doesn't just mean to, you know, insult somebody. But I want to give you approximately ten different ways that a person can chas for shalom be over in this halacha. And again, these halachas are not, you know, mufurish exactly in Shulchan Aruch. Some of them come from Chosh Mishpat, some of them come from Musas Farm, some come straight from the Gemaras, as we'll see Beis Hashem. So number one, there's a Gemara in Yuma. Perek Zayin, Chosh Mishpat brings it also, that if a person hurts somebody else with words, you have a chiv to ask mechila. Don't think, you know, Mechidu is only on if I do something wrong to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or I hurt someone financially, or I damage him financially. If I hurt somebody with words, I have a chiv to ask him Mechidu to go up to him and say, I'm sorry. It's a chiv gom in halacha, number one. Number two, I know Svarim happens with kids. People have to realize with their own children. You know, we think as parents, we can say what we like to our kids because we're the f- parents. So we can do what we like. Now, I'm not getting into chinuch at this moment of time. Of course, sometimes chinuch requires when it comes to a rebbe, when it comes to a teacher, when it comes to a parent, sometimes we need to do certain things to mechanek the child or the Talmud. I'm not going into it now. But just realize that it applies to children. We can embarrass, you can hurt a child, and this for a child, he takes it to heart, especially if it's by his rebbe, especially if it's by his teacher or his, or his parent. He takes it to heart. You have such a koyach inside your mouth. You have to use it correctly. And the Gemara tells us in Bometzi and Nuntes, Noyach lo Odom, Yibul Atzma Lekish and Eish. Right, Rashi brings it. We know. The Gemara tells us if you embarrass somebody else, if you embarrass somebody, right, you actually cause his face to go red. You've let the blood drain from within him. It's a tremendous, tremendous yisurin. In fact, Rabbi Niyona tells us. An unbelievable thing that if a person causes someone to do that, it's actually worse than murder. It's worse than murder. Even though we know that embarrassing someone is like you're murdering him, says Rabbeinu Yon, it's a lot worse. You know why? Because when you murder someone, you're probably going to regret it. You're going to regret it. No one's going to feel good about it. You're going to have a good conscience. You'll regret it. You'll have a bad conscience. You'll have a guilty conscience. When you embarrass somebody else, you walk away from the scene without even thinking about it for another moment. It's a lot worse than killing someone. Says Rabbeinu Yoyna, Rabbi Isai. That's Rabbeinu Yoyna. So we have to realize, we have to realize it's so serious. We're in this world for a purpose and we embarrass someone. Our words come out just so freely. We're so easy with them because, oh, big deal. What did I say already? And then the guy starts crying or gets upset with you, like, come on, what I say already? You know, maybe you took it the wrong way. You have to realize, you have a koyach, and you have to use it. Now, the Gemara tells us also in Bometzi and Nuntes, Nugget, to those that are married, that a person has to be extremely extra careful not to hurt your wife, not to hurt women. Why? The Gemara tells us, Mufurish, the preacher brings in that women are extra prone to becoming hurt, they can cry, and Lalenu, the Gemara tells us terrible things. If a person causes his wife to cry by the words that he utters, Shem Yurachim on such a person, I'm not going into detail now, but whatever it is, we have to realize it's extremely, extremely powerful. Also, we're dealing with an Amana, 
a yosom, someone that never hasn't got a husband, someone that hasn't got a, a parent, is an amana. We have to be extra sensitive and more careful to these people. They're prone to becoming insulted. They're prone to become embarrassed. Lord, these are regular people. We have to be careful. I want to give you a couple of examples of a nose to run, exactly what it means. Number one, Poshim Shan, obviously embarrassing somebody else. Well, if it's done in public, obviously you've increased the Avera because he's more embarrassed because the more people are there. So number one, simple, embarrassing somebody, terrible. Number two, mentioning somebody's past. The Gemara talks about this. You mention someone's past and you tell them, oh, I remember you, you used to be such a bum. You used to do this, you used to do that. Mentioning someone's past is a terrible thing. Now again, sometimes maybe he's asking him to allow to do it for certain reasons of toyeles, constructive purpose. We're not going into those etarim. But just realize, to mention somebody's past is a terrible thing without even realizing it. You can cause tremendous harm. The Yoruch HaShulchan, the Chovetz Chaim also brings that if you talk about somebody's family, you say to him, oh you, your parents are divorced, Oh, you, your parents say, father's a bug, doesn't do anything, this, that, and the other. Uh, you tell something like that, you hurt someone with his own features, you tell him, oh, you, you're fat, you have a big nose, or something like that. You hurt someone. Now, everybody may laugh for the first couple of moments, because, you know, he said it as a jest, he said it as a joke, but the guy inside is, 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 you can't imagine. You can't imagine what he's going through, and it's your words that caused him. The Gemara tells us, it's like murdering him. You have no idea the kayak of what you're doing. Another example is, you, t- you pour salt on a wound. For example, someone had something bad happen to him, and you say to him, eh, you know why it happened. You do all these avayas. Eh, you don't dub them properly. You say all these sorts of things. You're pouring salt on an open wound. It's a nasty worm. You're hurting somebody. You tell someone a snide remark. You say to him, oh, that's a nice, that's a beautiful shirt. Let's see how long that stays clean for, right? That's a nasty worm. You've upset him. He may not look it. He may not show it, but you've upset him. The Gemara talks about it again. This is Paskin Shulchan Aruch and Chayshim Mishpat. You call someone by a nickname. You call someone by a nickname. Hey, Chubby, how you doing? Right? Now, again, everybody may laugh and you may be happy with it. But to call someone by a nickname, these are major problems. And once again, you'll tell me, what do you mean? The guy doesn't mind. Do you really know what's going on inside him? Do you know what he feels at that moment? You have no idea. How can you say that? I'll give you another thing. The Rambam. In Hilchus Mechira, very interesting Rambam. The Rambam says if you ask them a question that you know they cannot answer, either they haven't learned it, or they've forgotten it, or whatever it may be, you're embarrassing the person because you're asking him a question that he will have no idea how to answer. And that's an embarrassing thing to do. Another thing as well, is spreading false rumors, practical jokes. The Chassam Soifa talks about this. In Chayish Mishpah, in Kuf Ayin Vov, says the Chassam Soifa, it's very funny to play a, play a practical joke on somebody, but it's at the expense of somebody's life, and expense of somebody's personal feeling. It's a terrible, terrible thing. The Rambam continues, and he says that if you tell, give someone advice that will cause embarrassment, you play a practical friend on, you know, someone or whatever, you know, for example, you refer, you refer, I know somebody that referred their friend as a cleaning person. So they said to someone, I've got a great cleaning person for you, call them my friend, right? The friend gets it, you know, hello, and said, oh, I've heard that you're a great cleaning person. You know, it's embarrassing. You've embarrassed someone. The Chassam Soifa talks about these things. You're embarrassing somebody else, playing a practical joke on somebody, maybe funny for a few moments, but you don't realize what you've done in this world and maybe even the next world. The Shulchan Aruch, this is Aloha, it's Aloha Sheh. The Shulchan Aruch and Chayshim Mishbot Simon Tovchov writes that if you scare somebody else, it's terrible. You should never scare. In fact, he says that's one of the reasons why the Kohen Gadol wore bells on his garments. To everyone should know when he came in. Nobody should be scared. Oh, the Kohen Gadol is coming. They knew for him. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. A person shouldn't scare other people. This Seyfi Yireim writes that a person shouldn't, shouldn't show a scary face on someone. You'll embarrass him, you'll hurt him by showing a scary face. It's a terrible thing. In fact, I'll tell you something interesting. Rav Ozan and Shevet HaLevi and Chelik Zayin Simon Reish Chav Dalad writes that's disturbing somebody's sleep. Everyone thinks disturbing someone's sleep is gezel shena. There's no gezel. You can't steal something that's not tangible. There's nothing there physical. So what is it, says Ravosna, don't think it's so good either. If it's not stealing, there's something else. It's included in a nasty volume. You're hurting him. When you disturb somebody's sleep, you're actually hurting him. It's a terrible thing that a person has to be very, very careful. Now, again, I'm going to switch sides for one moment. Let me just switch sides for a moment. To Ellis, maybe it's Muta, whatever it may be. Let me just switch sides for a moment. Somebody once was walking with a Chazanish, and the Chazanish, they're walking together with Chazanish, and somebody insulted him. And the guy turned, it was a guy, the guy turned back and he gave an insult back and the Chazanish was very upset. He said, why did you do that? He said, what do you mean? He insulted me? I want to go. Chazanish said, no. 
people think that silence is a sign of weakness. That if someone insults you and you remain silent, so you know, you be moida ala MS, something like that. You know, yeah, I'm asking, I'm nothing, what can I do? No, no, no. Says the Chazan Ishi, if a person is silent, it's actually showing his strength. It's showing that he's happy with who he is and where he's going. If a person's not happy and he feels that, ooh, maybe he's saying, Taka, that's right, he feels he has to respond. Silence is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. In fact, Rapinchos of Koritz writes down, that when a person is embarrassed, someone embarrasses him, what do you do? The first reaction is, go and respond, and insult him back, say something back, right? It's the worst thing you can do. Number one, it's a sign of weakness. You're showing that you're not happy with who you are. And number two, says your Pinchos of Koritz, a Gaval de Gazach. He says, imagine a mashal ma dover doime. What's it compared to? You have a person that's standing in front of the king. He's standing in front of this wealthy, powerful king. And a fellow comes up to this guy and gives him a slap on the face. So he thinks first reaction, hey, I have to hit him back. Then he thinks, hold on a minute. I'm standing in front of the king. The king saw what happened. Either he thinks the guy's right, and then I'm not going to go and do anything back, or if he's wrong, he'll deal with him himself. It says that Pinkos Koy, it's exactly the same thing to us. When we have a situation which we should never have, and we have to watch that it never happens from us to somebody else, but if it happens to us, that somebody does embarrass us, that someone does cause us some harm in an in a emotional way, so don't answer back. And think, you're standing in front of the Rebbe Nishlele Melech Malchei Amlochim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw what went on. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu thought that we needed it, so we needed it. For whatever reason, by him, that's a different story. But it needed to come to us. We needed to hear it for whatever reason. But if it wasn't right, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu would deal with it. What are we getting a vote for? What are we messing in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's business? Oh, I'm going to get you back because I feel that you said something wrong to me. Oh, it doesn't work that way. Rebbe say it's more than that as well. Sometimes the tone of voice that we use can hurt somebody. The Ramban is a famous letter in the Geras Ramban, where the Ramban writes that a person should speak calmly to somebody else. Always speak calmly, speak nicely. We have no idea that the tone of voice that we use can affect. I'll give you an example. There was a very hard-working storekeeper. They gave his son a large sum of money. He said, listen here, my son, I love you dearly. I'd like you to take this and make an investment in a faraway place. Hopefully, you'll make a lot of money for your family. You'll be able to support yourself. It will be wonderful. So the son says, thank you very, very much. The father says, just do me a favor. Write to me from time to time. Tell me where it's going. Tell me how you're, how you're doing. Where is it holding? So the son says, don't worry, pa. I'll do so. And a month later, he gets a letter. He gets a letter from his son. Now, this fellow was a simple innkeeper. He had no idea how to read. So the first guy that walked into his shop that morning, he says, Ooh, ooh, ooh I got a letter from my son. Please tell me what it says. Now, the guy that walked in was in a terrible mood. He was all upset. He stormed out of his house, and he came into the shop really upset. So he comes into the store. He says, sure, give me the letter. So he reads the letter. He says, dear father, I'm sorry to tell you that I lost all the money. I need more. Please send me the money right away. I'm sure I'll succeed with Hashem's help. Thank you very much, your son. Ah, oh, chutzpah, the father says, how can he write such a letter to me after everything I've done for him? I've given him money and I've given him this and that. Ah, oh, chutzpah, I'm not going to send him any money. That's terrible. And the rest of the day, this innkeeper was so upset how his son could just, you know, forget everything his father gave him and just write him this horrible letter. So he's upset. By the end of the day, somebody walks in and says, tell me, you know, why are you so upset? Oh, you've never seen such a letter my son wrote me after everything I've done for him. He says, let me see the letter. So he comes in, he gives the letter. He goes... Dear father, I'm so sorry to tell you that I lost all the money. I need more. Please send me money right away. I'm sure I'll succeed with Hashem. So thank you very much, your son. And when the guy heard this, he's like, wow. Oh, 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 if that's what he sent me, of course I'll send him money. We have no idea that the tone of voice sometimes, even if the language that we say isn't so, is okay, it's fine. But the way that we say the expressions on our faces, like Rabbi Saul Salanta said, our faces of Rishus Harabim. Everybody can see it. It's open to the public. You've got to be so careful. You've got to realize the koyach hapeh. You have to realize the koyach of your words. And it's so important to realize this. Because your words, as we said already, I'm going to sound like a broken record. But your words can affect someone for years and perhaps even a lifetime. Let us realize the koyach hapeh. Let us realize the koyach of our words. And Be'ez Hashem, week by week, as we go through these in we should be very glad to have Siyat HaDishmaya to work through these things and to take, come to a Madriga where our Kodesh Baruch will be happy and our friends will be happy. Be'ez Hashem. Shkoyach, have a good week.
You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.